In this example, we have radiographs of the right femur of a 67-year-old man who is complaining of a long-standing pain in the right femur, and we see a fairly complex-looking abnormality. More proximally, there's increased radio density with a somewhat speckled appearance, but in addition, there's also marked cortical thickening along the femoral shaft. In the intertrochanteric region here, and a little bit in the proximal shaft, there's these rounded, somewhat punctate, sclerotic radiodensities, so this tumor is forming some matrix. It's located centrally within the bone as opposed to being eccentric, and then as we look down along the shaft, there's further radiodensity, extensive cortical thickening, and a small amount of scalloping of the endosteal surface. When bone gets thick like this, it's typically an appearance of chronic, long-standing process, but doesn't mean it can't be a long-standing, slow-growing tumor. Elsewhere, the rest of the bones in the regional skeleton look unremarkable. A frog-leg lateral view of the femur shows, again, that it's a central lesion within the medullary cavity, extending along the diaphysis of the bone. In the same patient, using MRI, we can better define the extent of the lesion up and down the femur. These are sagittal MR images with T1 weighting on the left and T2 weighting done with inversion recovery on the right. They're linked together so we can see the signal abnormality going side by side. In the normal marrow, we expect fatty signal as we see up in the uh, region of the greater trochanter here. So the lesion, the abnormality, is really all of this extensive low signal on T1-weighted imaging corresponding with bright and some areas of dark signal on T2-weighted imaging. This is the heterogeneity that we saw in the tumor where proximally there's very low signal foci on T1 and on T2 that correspond with the calcifications, some smaller calcifications here, but as we go further down the femoral shaft, the signal is somewhat more homogeneous but we can see how extensive the signal is going all the way down the distal femoral diaphysis. In addition, there's some periosteal reaction along the distal aspect of the femur that indicates some reaction in this area. A patient like this in, in which a large, probable solitary bone neoplasm is identified is also likely to undergo a bone scan for one reason to detect activity in the primary lesion, but also to search for skeletal met metastatic disease. We can see in the frontal bone scan that there's increased activity both in the proximal femur in the region of those calcifications, but pretty extensive activity down the femoral diaphysis and particularly distally. Posterior view shows the same thing. There was no evidence of metastatic disease in this patient, though there is a small focus in the right sacroiliac joint posteriorly, which was thought to be degenerative. Zoomed in views show the femoral abnormal activity to better advantage. If we go back to the plain radiograph on this patient, again we come back to the idea that we're dealing with a mixed lesion, sclerotic foci which have a chondroid type of an appearance, but also with marked cortical thickening distally, some cortical endosteal scalloping in the mid femur, and a lesion that continues down the bone considerably. In the distal femur, both radiographically and on the MR imaging, we saw evidence of periosteal reaction, which again tends to lead us towards a more aggressive process. In summary, this patient has a relatively long lesion of the femur with a somewhat mixed appearance. The proximal part is consistent with a chondroid lesion. The thickening and extent of the lesion are all making it consistent with a chondrosarcoma, and this patient underwent excision of the entirety of the femur, confirming the diagnosis.